Okay, welcome everyone to my CST beginner guide. In the previous videos, we've designed a microstrip transmission line at 50 ohms. We've terminated these in two ways with the schematic tool and also in 3D. Well, now we're going to look at impedance matching circuits. The most basic one is a quarter wavelength impedance transformer. This has the ability to transform a real load uh, impedance to a, for example, a 50 ohm transmission line. Now, how do we implement this? Well, first we need to figure out what frequency we're designing it for. So let's go back to our schematic tool and let's investigate what it looks like at, for example, 200 ohms load. So here I've got the S parameters already simulated through the schematic tool. And as I mentioned, you can have the tuning function. So at 200 ohms, we see it's heavily mismatched. We can look at the dB chart and go, okay, most of it's being reflected back to the source. Well, we've got many ways of implementing this. We could go into the schematic tool and we could create a microstrip line and we could slowly tune it, the frequency that we want. Um, or we could go into the 3D environment and um, calculate what the, um, the wavelength will be at our design frequency. So we can achieve this information through gamma. And for example, we can take it about three gigahertz. And we know that the propagate, this is the beta value of the propagation constant. We can then convert this into, um, you know, millimeters, the amount of millimeters needed for a full wavelength at three gigahertz. And then we can divide that value by four. Uh, another easy way is to go into the 3D environment and to click on macro tools, go into calculate, calculate analytical line impedance. Go into thin microstrip and create the same geometry that you have here. So if you're using Rogers, uh, just put in what the relative permittivity would be. Now I'm using magnesium oxide, so I know that is 0.5. I have a width of 0.48. I have got my epsilon r of 9.7 and I'm just going to quick click on uh, calculate and there's my 50 ohm line. So one important thing we can do here is this phase shifting part down the bottom. If I set this to be 90 phase shift and I click on calculate, it then pops out a length for a quarter wavelength. There we go. So I'm going to copy that value. I'm going to exit. I'm going to close my tuner. I'm going to here and write quarter wavelength, tab, and paste. And then there's my quarter wavelength value. Now before implementing this in 3D, I'm actually going to implement it in the schematic tool. It's always best to do every type of design schematic tool first, and then implement it in 3D. However, for basic designs such as a quarter wavelength transformer, maybe some stub or double stub, uh, or some couple lines, you could just implement it straight away. Let's go into our schematic tool. So our quarter wavelength is going to sit between our 50 ohm 3D line and it's going to sit between our source here. I'm going to now delete this line connecting the load, sorry, and the 50 ohm line. And I'm going to scroll over to block selection. I'm going to click on the drop down bar from microstrip and give a little bit more room so I can see what's going on. Here under microstrip, we have bends. Um, let's put this up. There we go. Oh, I've made this a bit difficult. There we go. Um, we have microstrip. So our basic blocks, and then we can go into bends. We've got stubs to work with, discontinuities, coupled lines, and couplers. If we click on the microstrip, we can get a selection of a microstrip line, uh, radial stubs, uh, wires, and so forth. Let's take the microstrip line and drag it into our environment. Our first thing to do is we get this little arrow block, which is like the command block for everything, in which we set our overall um, parameters such as epsilon. So I know it's 9.7. And I know the height is going to be 0.5. I can leave the other ones, it doesn't implement us, uh, affect us Sorry, uh, too much, uh, so I'm going to leave it as is. Now, here's our transmission line. Well, if we're doing a quarter wavelength impedance transformer, 
we know that we're going to have to select this and put the length as quarter wave length. Now the width, the width of a quarter wave length line, we know is the square of the source impedance and uh, times by the load impedance. In this case, it's about 75. Now I could then calculate what that value would be. Um, however, I know it's gonna be less than 0 0.5 because um, that's 50 ohms and I want a higher impedance. I'm gonna set that to be 0 0.2 to start off with. And maybe I'll just double check that now. I can go back to the 3D environment, click on macros, calculate analytical line impedance, go all the way down to thin microstrip, put in my parameters of 0 0.5, width of 0 0.2, uh, permittivity of 9.7 and click calculate uh, 72 I mean it's close enough let's just go with it click exit okay let's head back to our schematic tool and connect all the blocks and we're going to go over to our navigation tree we're going to click update I wish to continue and navigation tree s parameters okay so One mistake that I can initially see is that we actually don't have a match at 3 gigahertz. So let's go back to our 3D environment. And if we click on macros, calculate analytical line impedance, we go back to thin microstrip, put in all our values. Uh, the width is, for example, we used 0 0.5 last time and we use 9.7 we clicked on calculate, I actually didn't change the operation frequency that we're using. So here, let's change the operational frequency to three gigahertz and put in 90 degrees what we wanted to do. So 90 degrees, calculate. And then here we got a completely different length. Perfect. Let's exit and now change our quarter wave length to a more correct length. We're gonna go back to our schematic view, update and click on the S parameters. Okay, perfect. Now we're starting to get a response at three gigahertz. So that correlates, but we're finding that the match, well, it's greater than 10 dB, but it's still not good. We want to see this crossover point or one of these crossover points actually get close to the center point of the Smith chart. Okay, what do we do? Well, we can go into home, tune, and we're actually going to be tuning the width of the microstrip. So we don't have a width parameter. So we're gonna close the tuner, go back to the schematic view, double click on our transmission line, and we'll find we have the width here. I'm gonna go width, 75, enter, and I'm gonna make it 0 0.2 again. I'm gonna rerun the simulation. I'm gonna to go to the navigation tree, double check nothing has changed, and click on tune again. Now we have our width 75. I'm gonna change it between 0 0.1, and 0 0.3. And now I'm gonna slowly change the value and see how it impacts my Smith chart. I'm getting smaller and smaller here and I'm getting a better match. So forth. Okay. We can go on through and we find at the 0 0.1 value, now we're achieving a far better match. Maybe we need to go a little bit smaller. So it's always good to view the Smith chart. Oh, did too much. There we go, if we check our DB response now. And here, now we have a, a match, a little bit off frequency in which we can tune. Oh, wrong way. And now we have an impedance matching circuit. So why did I have to pull the width of the 75 ohm line down? Well, I've just realized that I've actually set the ohmic load to be 200. So if this was something at perhaps 100 now, now I can pull this value back up to about 0 0.2. We'll find there we are. Perfect. It's matched. Quite nice, actually. Okay, and now I can quickly change the center frequency. We can push it back so it focuses around three. And we can slowly tweak the uh, width of the 75 ohm line. And there we go. That is a perfect match. And we check the Smith chart, and there it is. 
Okay, it's okay. So that's how we create a quarter wavelength line uh, or quarter wavelength transformer to match uh, a load using the CST schematic tool.